in this video, the ends with string method in Python. So let's start by creating a scenario. So let's say I had a string here such as Python, and I wanted to see if this string ends with another string. So let's say I had another string like on or ont, and I wanted to see does Python end with on? Does Python end with ont? Well, how would I do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is with the ends with string method. So what you would do is take your original string and then do dot ends with, and then here you can pass your substring. So we could pass on, and we can run that and see that it's true, that Python does end with on. And we could pass, say, ont, and we can see that that is false, that Python does not end with ont. So that is our base scenario, and we're going to go into a lot more detail in this video, but let's start with a look at the docs. So the ends with string method takes one mandatory argument, which we're calling suffix. It also takes two optional arguments called start and end. So ends with is going to return true if the string ends with the specified suffix, otherwise it's going to return false. So basically this ends with string method is going to return a boolean of either true or false. Now, I think the fact that they're calling the argument suffix is interesting. And they're using that term because it could be a couple different things. It could either be a string that you're going to pass as the argument, or it could be a tuple of suffixes, basically a tuple of strings, sort of like a list of a couple different strings that it could be. And then of course we have the optional start and end arguments in which we're basically going to use slice notation. And in this video, I'm going to explore all different examples to show you how the suffix works and how the start and the end optional arguments work. So let's start off by passing strings to the ends with string method. So our previous example we were looking at was ends with ONT, which we know to be false, or we could pass ON, which we know to be true, right? Python does end with ON. And kind of using that same logic, of course it ends with HON. And of course it ends with THON, right? So that's starting to make sense. And of course, if we just pass a bunch of random stuff, that's going to be false. Now what if we pass the entire string, right? Do you think that this is going to be true or false? Well, it's going to be true. Python does, in fact, end with Python, right? Um, but anything more, and we're going to get false. If you added even a space here, that's going to be false. If you tried to you know, pass it twice, Python, Python, that's going to be false. So basically the rule is that you can pass up to and including the entire original string. Next, let's look at some examples using a tuple. And so a tuple, of course, uses these brackets, right? And then in here, we could pass, say, Python, which we know to be true where we could pass basically sort of like a list of a couple different strings. And so we could pass on here as well, which we know to be true. And what's interesting is, so this one, the second example would obviously be false, but since we're passing a tuple, it's going to be true. Because basically we're going to be checking if at least one of the values in the tuple um, is the value that it ends with, right? So if I switch this, of course, to something that it didn't ends with, it's going to be false. But as long as even one of the values in the tuple is true, then uh, our response is going to be true. So we know that Python ends with n. And when we run this, we'll find out that this is true. If we make it a bunch of nonsense, it'll be false. And if we add one more value that's true, then that's going to make it true. So you only need one of the values in your tuple to be true in order for the uh, response to return true. Next, I wanted to show you what it looks like uh, when we're using variables instead of the strings themselves. So we could say something like a equals Python and b equals on, right? And so we could say a dot ends with b, which we know to be true, right? a is Python and b is on, so we know that to be true. We could do a ends with on, uh, or just n, and we know that to be true. Uh, we could switch that up and so say we could have b in here, and then we can use uh, the full you know, explicit string here, and we can see that to be true. 
So basically you can use variables for either or, for either the, the string itself on the outside or for the argument on the inside. And as a, another example, of course we, we just looked at tuples, right? So then we could look at say on and I don't know, <laughs> cheese, right? And then so we could say A ends with C and we're, we know that that's going to be true because on is in here. And if we remove that and replace that with something else, um, let's just say Vaughn, right? We run this again, we know that that's going to be false. But basically just wanted to show you uh, that you can pass tuples as variables in here as well. So that's kind of how a variable would work with this string method. Now the next thing I wanted to look at was the start optional argument, right? And so this is going to be an integer. And so what we're going to do is a dot ends with, and let's just say, I don't know, n, and then we'll start with zero. So that's basically the base case because we know that a dot zero is p. So basically we're starting at the beginning and we could do three here and we know that to be true. We could do five here and we know that to be true. Again, a five is going to be n, but as soon as you pass something that's sort of past the index, then that's going to be false um, because you're starting at six and a six doesn't even exist. So how is that going to work, right? And so let's say we pass something else here. So we know that um, n five will be true. Um, but if we do o n, then that's going to be false because, um, because of basically the starting point that you have, right? But if you lowered this down to four, that, that, then that's going to be true because a starting at four is going to be o. And so if we do start like that, then it's on. So this is all about basically slice notation. And I have some other videos on slice notation that you can check out, but basically the way it works is like start end, right? And so if we don't mention end, then, uh, then it doesn't matter. And so the start would be four, right? So we know that uh, if we start at four, if we start at on, uh, when we pass that, that's going to be true. Next, let's look at the end optional argument. And so what I wanna show you is that um, there's no way to just do like end equals five or whatever. There's no uh, keyword arguments. And so if you want to use end, you have to use start as well. So if you have to use, uh, if, if the start doesn't matter for you, then just put zero here, because that's basically the base case. And we can run this and we can see that that's false because we're actually ending it for. And if we want to see what that looks like, then we can put four on the other side, right? You can see how before we were putting it on the left side of the semicolon, and now we're on the right side of the semicolon. And what that would look like for Python is Pyth. And so we see that Pyth does not end with on. But if we you know, extended that out to the whole thing, if we ended at six, then we're getting the whole string of Python. And if we went back to our ends with string method, and we made our n six, then that's going to be true. But anything less than that, and that's going to be false. So let me give you one more start end example, and let's actually make a new string. So we'll say like, hey, nice to meet you, <laughs> right? So that's our new string. And so now we can do a dot ends with, and then we could say uh, you. And we know that it does in fact end with you right? Uh, this big string, even though it has, you know, um, some spaces in it, whatever, we know that it ends with you. And if we pass, say, even t to that, uh, that's going to be false because we're taking that space into consideration. So you'd have to do it like that. Now, the reason I chose a big string was what if you actually end this big string early and say you end it at 10. So, hey, nice t or even let's say we end it at eight. So now our string is hey nice. Well, um, this hey ends with you, which was working before. If we do uh, eight in here, then this is obviously going to be false because we're basically working with a different string now. Um, but as soon as you make this whatever, let's just say a hundred, then that's going to be true because that end is actually longer than our existing string, right? 
If you do A and 100, you're going to get that whole string still. If you did say start 100, then you're going to get none of that string, right? So if we did uh, start 100 here, then that's going to be false because you're, the, the string that you're trying to see is a subset. Uh, it's not actually comparing any, to anything. It's comparing to an empty string. So basically the whole thing about these optional arguments um, of start and end uh, is really all about mastering slice notation and learning how to work with slice notation with strings in Python. And if you have a good understanding of slice notation, then you'll have no problem using these optional arguments with the ends with string method. Oh, one other thing I wanted to do is just basically sort of like isolate one of the words in here. So let's say we want to isolate nice. So I think that this would start at four, right? So it would start at four and it would end at say eight. And so that is the word nice. And so if we come back here to our, um, our command and we pass nice here, uh, first we're going to get false because right now we're actually looking at the whole string. If we came down and passed four here, we're going to get false. But if we actually cut the end um, such that, you know, we're only getting nice when we run this, what do you think we're going to get? Well, we're going to get true, right? Because here we have the nice string and of course, nice ends with nice. And we can even reduce this down a little bit, whatever you want to do. And we can see that that's true. So you can see how these optional arguments um, of start and end help you basically um, capture a subset of a string if you really only want to see um, if, if a subset exists or uh, if a, a smaller subset of the original string sort of matches up. Does that make sense? So really at the end of the day, it's all about slice notation and mastering that. I'll actually give you one more example with emails. And so basically you wanted to see um, if an email was in fact a Gmail account. So we could do dot hotmail.com, right? And then we could also do um, at gmail.com. And then we could do a dot ends with, um, and we could pass say gmail.com here. And we know that to be false. Um, but if we did say b dot ends with gmail, we know that to be true. So maybe there's some sort of applications like that where you want to see, oh, like we only want uh, Gmail accounts to sign up for us. So you can check to see that those email addresses um, that are getting passed in the form or whatever are in fact Gmail accounts. So that's sort of basically one practical application that came to mind for the ends with string method. So in this video we've looked at a lot of stuff. Um, we've looked at using the suffix as either a string or a tuple. We've looked at the start and the end optional arguments. We've looked at some practical examples with emails and whatnot. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the end with, ends with string method in Python. And thanks so much for watching.